you want an epic lightsaber with cool NeoPixel effects, but you don't have $1,000 to spend on it. I'm going to show you how to make this, a lightsaber with awesome effects, sturdy enough to mock duel with for only $60. Let's build it. So how can we make a lightsaber that competes with the top sabers available for thousands of dollars? Conveniently, many of these sabers actually use modified Arduino boards to control the saber's functions, so we can use an Arduino Tiny board available for only $2 and we'll be able to program it in the Arduino IDE. Now, for the blade, we're going to need a strip of LEDs all the way down the blade so that we can get even lighting and create awesome effects like turning these on one by one to create the drawing effect. Fortunately, RGB LED strips have become quite mainstream, so we can pick up two of these with 144 LEDs per meter for only 14 bucks each, and we'll be able to create any color we want on our saber. The blade will pick up from a store like Ultra Sabers so we can get one with diffusive film and a cap for only $12. I got a few of these for some variety and none of them had any issues. My favorite is definitely the heavy grade Ultra Edge because the white polycarbonate diffuses the light very nicely. We'll also need a momentary button for handling the features, a switch for turning the saber on and off, a 9 volt battery plug, and some packing foam. You can find links to all of these in the description below if you're interested. That's all of the electronics, but you can't have a lightsaber without an awesome hilt. You can make it out of anything you want, but we're going to use PVC because it's cheap and sturdy. Now that we have all of the materials, let's put them together on this breadboard here to make sure they all work. The core of everything is our Arduino tiny board, so I'll slot that in first. I'll connect the negative lead from the battery clip to the breadboard, and a wire from that ground line to the ground port on the Arduino, and from the ground line to the RGB LED strip's white wire. Then I'll connect the positive lead from the battery to the switch, and a wire from the switch to the V-in port, and from the switch to the RGB LED strip's red one. Now the tiny board and the LEDs are both powered. Then, let's control our LEDs by connecting a wire from port 3 to the RGB LED strip's green wire. Let's add a button to our breadboard and connect a wire from the 5 volt pin to one of its pins, and from the opposite corner to pin 4. Now that the prototype is fully set up, let's get our prototype to control our blade and show all the awesome effects we want. I've already set up this blade, but don't worry, I'll show you how to put a blade together in just a few minutes. I've also put a link to the code in the description, so if you're confused about anything, just check that out or leave a comment. The first thing we need to do is open up the library manager, type in FastLED, and download the FastLED library so we can control the LED strips. Then, at the top, we can type hash include fastled.h. Then, let's define a constant LED pin set to 3, and button pin set to 4, so we can access the pins the button and the LEDs are connected to. Then, we need to define some variables for the LED strips. We'll have a num LEDs, which I'll set to 265, because that's about how many LEDs we'll be using, a brightness, which I'll set to 64, because that's the maximum, an LED type, which is the specific model of LED, in our case it's WS2812, then we'll define a color order, which in our case is GRB, for green, then red, then blue. Then we'll create a CRGB LEDs array with num LEDs items in it. Now CRGB is just a variable that contains three integers, one for red, one for green, one for blue, and some other stuff that allows the library to see it as an LED. Then we'll create a bool activated that will tell us whether the saber is lit up or not, and a bool button down that will hold whether or not the button is pressed. I'll also need an LED per frame, so when we're turning on the LEDs one by one to create the drawing effect, it's a bit slow, so I'm going to turn them on three by three instead, so I'll set this to three. We'll also need to create an int R, an int G, and an int B to be the current color of the saber. So the red, green, and blue values, each from 0 to 255. I'll set red and green to 255 and blue to 0 to get a nice yellow color. In the setup function, we'll start by running fastled.addleds, and then in chevrons, LED type, LED pin, and color order, then in parentheses, LEDs, num LEDs, and then fastled.set brightness, brightness. Then we can run pin mode, button pin, input to set up the button. Then we'll create an unsigned int off array with three items in it and set it to 0, 0, 0. Then I'll call the function set whole saber to color and pass in this off array. So we can set the whole saber to off. Of course, the set whole saber to color function doesn't exist yet, so I'll create it down below the void loop function. This will be a void set whole saber to color, and we'll need an unsigned int color array with three items. The first thing I'll do is create a for loop going from zero to num LEDs, and inside of it I'll set LEDs LED, so the LED in the 
LEDs array at this index to CRGB color 0, color 1, color 2. So basically we're looping through all of the items in the LEDs array and setting them all to the color that was passed into this function. Of course changing it from an int array to a CRGB value. Then we'll run fastled.show to send the colors from the array to the actual LEDs. Now that we're setting the entire lightsaber to black or off when the Arduino first boots up, let's add some code in the loop function so when we press the button, the blade shows the activation effect. Let's start by setting int button state equal to digital read button pick. Then we'll check if not button down and button state is equal to high. So if the button wasn't down the last time we checked, but it is down now, then we should activate the saber or deactivate it if it's activated. So if activated, deactivate saber, else activate saber. At the bottom, let's start by creating activate saber. I'll create a for loop going from 0 to less than or equal to num LEDs divided by 2, because remember, half of the LEDs are on each side of the blade, and we want this to increase by LEDs per frame so we can control how fast the blade draws. Then inside of that loop, I'll create another loop going from 0 to less than or equal to LED. So the outer loop will go from 0 all the way up to the last LED, and each time we change the outer loop, we'll use the inner loop to light up all of the LEDs from 0 to the outer loop's current value. Inside of this, we'll set LEDs I to CRGB RGB, and LEDs num LEDs minus I to CRGB RGB. So we'll turn on the zeroth LED at the same time as we turn on the last LED, and then we'll turn on the first LED at the same time as we turn on the next to last LED, and so on. Then we'll run fastled.show inside of the outer loop so that each time we increase how much of the blade is lit, we also show it. Then outside of that loop, so once the blade is activated, we want to set activated to true. Now I'll copy the entire function down below this and rename it to deactivate saber. And all I'm going to change is to set num LEDs divided by 2 minus i and num LEDs divided by 2 plus i to CRGB000. So instead of turning on LEDs starting at the base of the blade and going up to the top, we're turning off LEDs starting at the top and coming back down towards the base. We'll also need to set activated to false at the end of the function. Now the blade is activating and deactivating and it looks awesome. But we have to edit the code if we want to change the color. So let's add a color changing mode to our saber so we can select whatever color we want for our blade. First, we need to detect double clicks. And in order to do that, we're going to need a few variables. First up is int double press max time. So this is how long you have in order to do your double click. Setting this to longer makes double clicking easier, but also makes you wait longer before a single press can be registered. Then we'll have an unsigned long long time press set to zero, and an unsigned long time press limit also set to zero. We also need an int clicks, so how many times the button has been pressed, inside of the double press max time of course, and a bool changing which will define whether we're in the color changing mode or not. After we get the button state in the loop function, let's check if button state is equal to high, and if the button is pressed, we'll start by waiting for 200 milliseconds, and then if clicks is equal to zero, we'll set time press to millis, and time press limit to time press plus double press max time. Then we'll set clicks to 1. So basically the time press is when we press the button for the first time and the limit is 250 milliseconds after that time. If we press the button again within 250 milliseconds then we'll register a double click. But if 250 milliseconds pass without a second click we'll register a single click. So right below this we'll check else if clicks is equal to 1 and millis is less than time press limit then this is a double click because we already have one click and we're adding another. So changing should be set equal to true to put us in color color change mode, and we'll reset time press to zero, time press limit to zero, and clicks to zero. Then instead of checking if the button was just pressed, we'll check if clicks is equal to one, and time press limit does not equal zero, and millis is greater than time press limit. So if there has only been one press and we're past the 250 milliseconds, we should register a single press, which will be activating or deactivating the lights. We also want to reset time press to zero, time press limit to zero, and clicks to zero. Okay, so now we can activate and deactivate the lightsaber and go into color changing mode, but we still need to actually create color changing mode. So with activated and changing, what we want to do is change the saber through a bunch of colors smoothly, and when the user presses the button, we'll stop changing and use the color that they've selected. First, I'm going to create an unsigned in RGB color array with three items. I'll set item 0, which is red, to 255, and items 1 and 2, which are green and blue to zero. Then I'll say for int deck color equals zero, deck color is less than three, deck color plus plus. And deck color is the decreasing color. So there's going to be a decreasing color and an increasing color. So first we'll decrease red as we increase green, and that will take us from red through orange and yellow to green. 
Then we'll decrease green as we increase blue, and that will take us from green through blue-green and light blue to blue. And finally, we decrease blue as we increase red, which will take us from blue through purple, and finally back to red. So the decreasing color goes from 0 to 1 to 2, and then we'll set int ink color to deck color is equal to 2, question mark, 0, colon, deck color plus 1. So if the decreasing color is 2, the increasing color will be 0. Otherwise, it will just be the decreasing color plus 1. Now that we have the increasing and decreasing colors, we can create a for loop going from 0 to 255. And inside of this, we'll say RGB color decreasing color minus equals 1 and RGB color increasing color plus equals 1 to crossfade the two colors. Then we need to run set whole saber to color RGB color to show the color on the saber and delay 10 to keep the colors moving more slowly. Then we'll say if digital read button pin is equal to high, so if the button is pressed, then we want to stop at this color. First, we'll type R equals RGB color 0, then G equals RGB color 1, and then B equals RGB color 2. Changing equals false, time press equals 0, time press limit equals 0, clicks equals 5, so we don't do anything with them, and then we'll return. Then at the bottom of the loop function, I'll say if clicks is greater than or equal to 2, clicks equals 0, so we don't have any issues with clicks getting out of control. The last thing to do is go back to the activate saber function and at the bottom reset all of the click related variables so changing equals false time press equals zero time press limit equals zero and clicks equals zero just so we don't have any double clicking when the lightsaber isn't active as you can see we can draw the saber and use a double click to activate color changing and a single click to stop it and use that color now let's make the arduino board save the color so when we turn the lightsaber off and then on again it starts up with the color we were using at the top we'll hash include eeprom.h which is the library we need to actually access the Arduino's memory for saving data. Now, in the setup function, we'll want to check if we have a saved lightsaber color in storage. Since we can only store integers in the storage, I'll store my red value at index 0, my green value at index 1, and my blue value at index 2. So to check if we have a stored color, I'll check if not eeprom.read0 is equal to 0, and eeprom.read1 is equal to 0, and eeprom.read2 is equal to 0. So if all three slots are equal to 0, we haven't saved a color, and we won't do this if statement. But if at least one of them is another number, we'll say r equals eeprom.read0 and g equals eeprom.read1 and b equals eeprom.read2. So we're loading up our red, green, and blue variables with the saved values. In order to save the color, I'll go into the color changing part of the loop function and when the user selects a color, I'll say eeprom.write at address 0, the value in r, and eeprom.write at address 1, the value in g, and eeprom.write at address 2, the value in b. And now we're saving the color we select even if we turn the saber off off and then on again. Let's finish up our lightsaber electronics and assemble our blade. Before we start setting this up, let me show you what it's going to look like. We're going to have two LED strips back to back like this, with the LEDs staggered so the light can be distributed more evenly. There's going to be a single male connector at the hilt side, and this is very important, the LED strip with the male connector has these arrows going away from the hilt, while the other strip has the arrows coming back towards the hilt. At the very end, these strips will be soldered together and will have one LED on top to shine light out of the tip. Now let's put it together. Line the LED strips up with the bottom of the blade and then trim them off so that they stop at the tip of the blade. When I make the cut, I'll be careful to leave as much pad as possible on the long side that we'll be using so that I have an easier time with the solder. Then I'll desolder the female connector from the hilt end and set it aside for later. I'll remove the cover from one strip and the cover and tape from the other. I'll use the tape to stick them together, starting at the tip and making making sure the LEDs are staggered. Then I'll move down the strips, carefully sticking it down so that they stay straight. With them stuck together, I'll actually peel them apart at the tip and fold over the farther out LED so that it'll be on top of the blade. Then I'll bend the copper pads from the other strip over the copper pads from this strip which I just folded down. We need to make sure the copper pads are touching so that we can solder them together easily. Now it's important to remember that these are two separate pads, so you're going to have to heat both of them up with the soldering iron in order to spread the solder across and get a good connection. The middle one is definitely the hardest, so I'd recommend doing the outside ones first so you're a little bit practiced. Now let's set up the electronics for the Arduino. First, I'll solder the red wire from the 9 volt clip to the switch. Then I'll cut two red wires and solder both of them to the other side of the switch. I'll take one of these and solder it onto the Arduino board's V in port. And 
then I'll take the other one and solder it to the LED strip's red wire. Then we'll take the black wire from the battery clip and solder two black wires to it. I'll solder one of these to the Arduino's ground pin and the other to our female connector's white wire. Then I'll want to extend the green wire coming off of the plug with a red wire going to port 3 on the Arduino so that the Arduino can control the LEDs. The last thing we need to do is take a wire from the Arduino's 5 volt port and a wire from the Arduino's port 4 and connect them to our button. We'll start by tinning the button's pads and tinning the wires and then all we have to do is press the wire down and put the soldering iron on top of it and they'll merge together. Awesome! The LEDs are really starting to look like a lightsaber blade, so let's put that together next. I'll take the LEDs and the packing foam and test how much I can reasonably cram into the blade. Keep in mind that the foam does bunch up when you try to cram it into the blade, so you may want a little bit more room than you initially expect. I've decided to go with 3.75 inches, so I'll cut a few sections of packing foam at that width and place them next to the LED strips. I'll start by taking one edge of the foam to the LED strips and then wrap the foam around as tightly as possible and then tape it in place. Once we have all three sections of foam wrapped and taped, we'll take the diffusive film out of our blade, unwrap it a little bit so it's looser, and then slide it around our foam construction. Then we'll tighten it as much as possible to compress the foam in, and then slide it into the blade. Then we can connect this plug to the plug we solder to our electronics and power it on. Now our blade is looking awesome, let's finish our lightsaber by crafting a hilt for it. I'll start by cutting a 12 inch piece of 1 inch BBC and securing it on the lathe. what it looks like after we finish with the lathe. On the bottom of the hilt, I'll set our 9 volt down and use a marker to mark out the four corners and then file out indentations so that we can slot the 9 volt in easily. Then I'm going to print out these templates, which you can find in the description on cardstock, and then cut them out. I'll wrap the larger section around the piece of PVC so that I can mark the line for cutting the emitter off. Then, on the long side of the emitter, I'll drill a small hole and then mark from the edge of the hole to the end of the emitter. Then, I'll use a hacksaw to cut from the end to the hole at the edges to create this nice slot for showcasing the blade. Below that, I'll drill a half-inch hole for the button to go through. I'll also cut out a small piece of cardstock that will fit in the end of the hilt. Our hilt will be painted three different colors. The base color, which the PVC will be painted, the main color, which the larger piece of cardstock will be painted, and the accent color, which the other two pieces of cardstock will be painted. Then, I'll trim the cardstock around the emitter so it's the proper shape. Now that the pieces are painted, I'll slide on the gold section and glue it down. Then, we can line up the electronics, with the plug for the LEDs on top, then the button, then the Arduino Nano, then this whole mess of wires, then the 9 volt, and lastly the switch. Then, we can slide them in in that order. I'll pull the button and the plug for the LEDs all the way out the top of the emitter, and then cut out some small squares of cardboard which I'll glue under the button to keep it at the appropriate height inside the hilt. Then we can slide the button back in, line it up with the hole, and push a button cap through the outside of the hole and click it down onto the button. Then we can take the little silver button cover and glue it down onto the button to cover up both the button and the seat. We can also glue the edges of that down so that it doesn't stick out. Then we can slide in the 9 volt battery, and then we can cut a slit and a rectangular hole in the bottom piece for the switch. Once we put the switch in, we can add lots of hot glue to secure it to this little piece and make this little piece structural. Then we're going to add even more hot glue, absolutely coating the thing so that all of the edges are surrounded by hot glue. Once it's dry, we can force it in and it will be quite snug thanks to all of that hot glue. I'll plug in the blade and then trim off the red and white wires that don't lead to anything. I'll add some electrical tape around the very end of it to make the fit tighter, and then I'll force it down into the hilt. Here is the finished lightsaber hilt, and if we shut down the lights, we can activate it by pressing the button and change the color to anything we want by double clicking. It's sturdy enough to duel with, and of course it looks absolutely stunning in darker areas. Thanks for watching, and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss future lightsaber videos.